Hello friends. Um, I had a couple days ago I had a chance to um, attend a performance at Kennedy Center of the Washington National Opera's um, performance of Appomattox by Philip Glass. Um, the libretto is by Christopher Hampton. Um, I saw this on Saturday night, November 21st, 2015. So this was, this is actually a, um, the opera was written, I think originally performed in 2007, so it's a, it's a new opera, but then it was completely reworked, so it's having its reworked uh, premiere this week in Washington, D.C., and I, I didn't see it on the premiere night, but I, I did see it during the premiere week, so... You know, and I almost didn't go to this opera, and I'm so glad that I that I did, um, because it was it turned out to just to just really be phenomenal. So, first of all, here's the the program. So, just a bit about the opera. So, this opera has so much information and so much detail packed into it that it's going to be impossible to, to, to really go into and explain everything in this little short video. I mean, picture an opera that's got Abraham Lincoln, Lyndon Johnson, Martin Luther King, Mary Todd Lincoln, Frederick Douglass, Robert E. Lee, General Grant, Julia Grant, um, Mary Custis Lee, Mrs. Lee, Frederick Douglass's um, significant other, Mrs. Dorsey, um, the dressmaker to Mrs. Lincoln, Elizabeth, I uh, forget her last name, um, George Wallace, um, and more. <laughs> um, packed in just like a huge cast of characters. Um, the first act, it takes place back in 1865. So the name of the opera is Appomattox. And it's, the opera starts out and there's Union soldiers. It's 1865. Union soldiers are singing, tenting on the old campground, which is a Civil War era song that's sort of, um, you know, a lament and a, their longing for peace. And um, that's followed by the, um, some, a group of women come in one by one and they, they're singing how war is sorrowful and the women are, it's Mary Todd Lincoln, it's Elizabeth, um, I think her name is, I can't remember her name, Elizabeth, it's gonna bug me till I know, um, Elizabeth Keckley. Elizabeth Keckley was Ms. Mary Todd Lincoln's uh, Mary Todd Lincoln's dressmaker. So Elizabeth Keckley, Mary Todd Lincoln, Julia Grant, Mrs. Lee, um, they're all coming in their own space and singing this lament that war is sorrowful. So that sort of sets the tone for the for the for the first act, which is um, the Civil War, which is raging all around us. And um, the other um, main part of this, this, the, the first act, I, you know, is, is really um, the struggle that's going on in the Civil War between General Grant and General Lee, and as well as um, Abraham Lincoln's plans for emancipation of the slaves after the war and Frederick Douglass's, um, you know, hope that they're going to be given suffrage. Um, and so this is sort of the theme of the first act. And um, so ultimately, President Lincoln actually did grant, give suffrage to, to the slaves, well, to the males, because in the 19th century, of course, no women at all had, had the right to vote. So this is only, when we speak of suffrage in the 19th century, it's only for, for the males. So the first act ends, and after the first act ends, we come back in the second act, and it's 1965. So it's been 100 years later, 1865 to 1965. And in 1965, we join the struggle then with the Voting Rights Act, uh, because in that interim 100 years between Act 1 and Act 2, um, what ended in 
great hope in at the end of Act One, which was um, the Civil War had ended, the North had won, um, the um, the slaves had been granted the the male slaves had been granted suffrage. Um, by the time Act One actually ends, the very last scene in Act One though is is foreshadowing that things are about to go awry when um, a group of um, freed black males are killed in Louisiana um, voting um, in a courthouse. So anyway, 1965. So 1965, we join the, the action in Act Two. This is, this is President Lincoln, uh, President Lincoln, President Johnson um, working to get the Civil Rights um, the Voting Rights Act passed, and then Martin Luther King's um, march in Selma uh, to Montgomery um, in the, the sort of the voting rights, the civil rights um, protests that are going on, going on around that. So um, it just, there's, there's just an incredible amount of historical detail um, that, that ties these two acts together. Um, so the it the the civil the civil rights act I mean the we have Lyndon Johnson trying to pack the civil rights act then pass the civil rights act then we also have the civil rights um, movement itself which has some activists so really a lot of the story in Act Two centers around this um, person this activist who had been killed uh, his name is Jimmy Lee Jackson. And he had been killed um, registering to vote. He had been, or he was either registering to vote or advocating to register to vote. And um, a trooper beat him. He was beaten very badly, and then he he ultimately died. So a lot of the emotion of the second act centers around this event. Um, you know, ultimately, um, ultimately the. Um, the Civil Rights, the Voting Rights Act bill does indeed pass. And um, then at the end of, of the second act, we are left with this idea that um, that it ended in 1965, but we are, we get, we're aware um, that the struggle, it, it continues on um, to the present day. And how we're aware of that is because um, at the very end, the there is a scene where the which takes place in 2011, where the trooper that killed um, the trooper that killed Jimmy Lee Jackson, and also the man who killed um, a couple of other three other civil rights workers, a couple of Jewish guys and a and a black guy um, who aren't named, I don't believe, in the in the opera, um, but that comes from real life. Um, that comes from history. They have a scene together where they're um, where they sing, um, you know, what they had done and and describe how they had killed killed the uh, civil rights activists, and they were not repentant of what they had done. So actually, they felt themselves to be martyrs to their own cause. They felt like they had martyred themselves to the cause, to their cause of being opposing civil rights, the Voting Rights Act. Um, so there was this theme of martyrdom through the whole, um, through the whole opera, really. Um, we all know Abraham Lincoln's ultimately martyred. Um, Martin Luther King is martyred. Um, even the guy who owned the house that the truce of the Civil War took place in, in Appomattox, Virginia, um, you know, in he sings, uh, he sings in an opera in, in in a portion of the opera where he sings. Um, he didn't. He actually meant to escape uh, the war, and um, it came to him anyway. And then at the end of his scene. Um, his house is being looted by by soldiers, basically. So, in a sense, he was a martyr too. So, there's this martyrdom uh, component, and then um, I think the really um, the really unifying voices were at the very beginning, where the women are singing "War is Sorrowful," and then at the very end, um, a group of women joins, come on stage again, and sing um, about the continuing struggle of um, equality and 
um, civil rights, and you really get this idea that you know the struggle is not over; that we're still moving forward. You still have this. I still had this this sense of the story's not finished. The story, the story, this chapter of this the Voting Rights Act is finished, but there's another chapter coming. Um, there was this real sense that we were still moving moving forward. But that last uh, that last scene was um, very beautifully sung, and it was actually one of my favorite favorite parts of, of the opera. Another really key uh, part that I really liked um, was Martin Luther King at one point sings um, the Battle Hymn of the Republic, and he sings that so beautifully. It's just so beautifully done, and it's it's very familiar because it's the Battle Hymn of the Republic, so it's kind of an iconic song that's very familiar to, to many people, but it's sung in this different way, this new way, and it's you know of course it's operatic. So um, that was that was also a high point for me. But um, you know I really hope this this opera gets performed again, um, gets performed more. I think it tells a really important story, and I think it's uh, it tells it really well. And I th I, I think that. You know, just from an American standpoint, um, it's it's just an important part of our our history and our narrative as a as a culture. So you know, but you know, it might actually be um, it might actually be a universal story. Uh, I have to think about that some, um, but it's definitely you know, seeing it as an American, it's definitely a, an American story. Um, anyway, I'm so glad I went. Um, Anyway, I just thought I would share my uh, my thoughts on it. Um, if you saw it, uh, I'd love to hear about it, or if you have any any questions. I didn't go into nearly the detail. I mean, literally, I could spend an hour uh, talking about this opera because it was so detailed. So many historical events happened. So many points to were made, and so many so many ways to connect it. Um, the discussion could could continue. So. Um, I hope you found that helpful or interesting, and um, I will check in with you all the next time I see something good. Okay? Take care. Bye.